Some people say that rollerblading is easier because the wheels are to your feet. I say that it's pushed the sport so big that the risks are getting bigger and bigger. The skaters know this as well, so they've created superstitions and rituals. We caught up with a bunch of the guys to find out what they were. I guess I like to wear two pairs of socks, but I don't know if that's a suspicion. It's just to keep my feet from moving around. When I put my skates on, I put my right skate on, and pull my left skate. Always. You know there's a lot of guys out there doing all kinds of hand signals and stuff like that. And I'm not sure why they're doing it, but they're doing it. Right here, you go your elbow and you go your forehead. You never do it more than three times, but you don't do it twice. So you can do it once, like this. That's okay, like that. And if you mess up, you're like, oh, you have to like fix it. You have to go three times, like this. I do like this. I don't know where I started, but we used to do this tap, bull crap, and then now it's just like, forget it. Just if you're gonna get hurt, get hurt. If not, go do your tricks. I always had a habit of just like knocking on my helmet. It's not wood, but I don't know. It just, it just happened. It usually treats me right. I only wear necklaces and like bracelets that my friends give me, that or it's gotta be given to me just. And like, uh, I'll wear them for like months without taking them off. Just, get, just don't think. I'm giving mine up too then. You do superstitions, you think. There's no reason to think. You just go. You know, without thinking. So it's done, you're not gonna do it anymore. No more. You guys will never get to see me do it again. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> when we come back, the park final. very mixed group. Louis Zamora, Cameron Carr, Dominic Sagona, some real street wizards and competition guys like Mike Budnick, Sven Bokerst, and Jaron Grove make up our final list. First up out of American Fork, Utah, last year's rookie, Cameron Carr. Starting out with a sunny day, also known as a topside forward porn star, spinning and then the top side sole to back, back side, back side. So good combination across that coping box. Now setting up, going into the mini ramp for the back slide, stepping through to alley -oop top side asset sole. So a brand new trick from Cameron Card, right into the alley -oop top side sole, showing off a lot of technicality in this run. And another step through trick, a lot of difficult grind variations. Uh, Cameron Card has not missed a beat. This is something that we don't see too often in a uh, street contest. This is not the most exciting run that you've ever seen, but he's packing so much difficulty into this run. And the reason guys shy away from runs like this is they're usually real low percentage tricks. Not tricks that you expect to land every time. But the fact that Cameron is throwing so much difficulty in this run and landing all these tricks probably means he's going to get a pretty high score. And he's not missed a beat until right here at the buzzer. He's got nose pick 540. Very good first run. One of the most technical runs probably ever seen on a park course didn't go down at all in the most difficult tricks. Have you got anything saved up for the final round? I mean, you've nailed your first one, you can let loose now, right? <laughs> uh, I'm not really that kind of skater, but I'll try, you know, I'm gonna try to throw something. Come on, bust out something. Think about it, be creative. This is Inline Park. Take a pedal. 265 second runs, best of two. We well, have. they get it. Hopefully Randy Marino will get it as well, 19 years old, in front of his hometown. Yeah, coming out of Dallas, Texas. Popping off of the rail. 180 over the small wedge pyramid. Here he goes. He's headed somewhere with speed, charging across the top of the course. Big air transfer. Right into the disaster royale. So here you can see it, two very different styles of skaters, both with different approaches to the same course. Right, absolutely, very good point, showing you the contrasting styles, Randy trying to make it a different kind of excitement, almost losing it, and I think he 
did a pose. Did he grab his helmet? He did that grind over the spine. Either that or he put his hand up to let the judges know that that trick was his unnatural direction. He is just on the brink of falling. Well, that is Randy the entire style. run, but staying on his feet, pulling off his tricks. Three seconds left, time for one final run. Top side soul to finish it off. And as you mentioned, on the brink of disaster throughout that entire run, but somehow managing to hold it all together. Huge transfer over the corner. And then this is his very last trick to top side soul, clean, no problem. Coming out here to these ESPN X trial events. Uh, get the people stoked on it, get more people into skating so they can have fun too. What? Always the showman out there putting on a good show in second. My name is Darren Grove, I'm from Orem, Utah. I'm into you know, like hardcore music a lot. I just wear black, it's my favorite color. But I don't know, in Texas, it's pretty hot, man. I just like these contests because you get to come and skate with all your friends from all over the world and they push you and you learn stuff and just have a good time. That's why I like these contests. They're just fun. Well, Jaron Grove has become a crossover superstar out here. Definitely appeals to the crowd for his go big style, but has the respect of true street skaters as well. Well, you see why he's become such a favorite already with the very start of his run. Those first three tricks were very good. Dropping the soul in that huge sub box right into the 540 over the channel. And now you can see he just keeps it going throughout the entire run. 900 over the box, which incidentally the judges have a hard time seeing because of that big sub sub box there right in their line of vision oh, freestyle fish frame that means no grab and then uh oh first misstep for jaron here in his first run great recovery though yeah it's good when you can i mean never good when you fall but when you can stay on your feet and keep your line going it doesn't hurt you as much when you go down all the way and it really takes eats up that time and takes away your line again no grab on the 540 over that pyramid bank to bank now at the final few seconds, jumping up, forward porn star. Let's see how he finishes this thing. Headed for his final big 360. So a very, very good run for Jaron Grove here in the first round. A great use of the whole course. Jaron Grove, the only skater so far in the final to use this launch box. He's got one killer run in the back. Oh, Should I go crazy next one? Yes, yeah, he feels <laughs> any in particular? Oh uh, yeah, you'll see. Gotta watch. So Jaron Grubb sits in second. Cameron Card with the super tech first run sits on top, but lots more here in the first round. in the top two spots are both out of Utah. That could change as we move into the order. A true, true street skater, Dominic Sigona out of Escondido, California, is up. Pretty unique style here from Dominic. He's got that shirt half on wearing two different color skates. But more than just that style is unique about Dominic Sigona. As you can see, very creative skating as he pops off the little wall stall on the railing. And that's vintage to go to the way he lands out of those tricks. It looks so squirrely. It's so about it's just so cool. One pant leg rolled up. This guy it's a trip out there. <laughs> Spinning into the backside far finger. And then coming back the other way, trying to get on true spin, Alley of Topside Soul. Where's Dominic? Oh there he is. Working his way back up to that start box with the handrail in front of him. Looking like he's got a little wind in there. <laughs> it's tough, you know, you gotta skate for a whole minute almost. Abstract 540. No one does that better than Dominic Shagun. That's vintage style. And waving it off after skating for about 10 seconds. Tomnik is through, exhausted. But look at the style on that 540, whipping around the last 180. Well, he didn't even work the entire run length, and he still ended up with a very nice first run score. Now, Luis Zamora already has a spot to the X Games. 74-25 here in his first run. Ouch. 360 John Murakami in his second year on the Pro Tour. Becoming a fixture here in the finals.
every contest, Torque was seeming to make the top 10. And Pat Lennon, known as one of the most creative street course skaters in the world. Yeah, no doubt about it. And he's always good for, well, there's why you're creative lines. He's also always good for a stunt. You can always count on Pat to find something creative and very dangerous at every contest. So we'll be excited to wait and see what that is. There's the big Misty flip. Just giving us a taste of the excitement that we can expect from Pat Lennon. on top of the sub box, but balancing on one toe, a little toe roll, all the way across the sub box. Working these little tricks in, building that line score, launching up to the top of the sub box with the sole grind. Is he talking to us? Something going else. somewhere. <laughs> oh, on the other side of that rail is probably about a 20 foot drop, so that's a dangerous trick, although you can't fully appreciate it from the way we looked at it. Upside down with the Missy flip. And then there you can see a better view of it. I just want to stay on my feet and, uh, you know, just land my first run, and hopefully, uh, I landed pretty much most of my first run, so now I can just step it up in the second run and take a few risky. Well, he's tied for second now. Sven Boker is one of the most dominant street skaters in the world when it comes to competition. Yeah, but last season, he took some time off to focus on his studies, and it was reflected in his ranking. He dropped a bit, wasn't able to commit to the contest season like he had in the past. But now you see him coming out with a new season, new commitment, and already picking up where he left off a couple years ago, trying to regain that championship form. Well, if there's been any criticism of Sven, it's that he doesn't have enough of a flashy style and doesn't push the envelope when it comes to technicality, but he's always so consistent. Well, and his tricks, his grinds are pretty technical. It's easy to discount them because he does them so consistently. People don't appreciate sometimes how hard they really are. Transferring over the channel of the soul grinds. Right into the backslide. So you can see all these tricks are pretty good. Fakey 360 into the alley of soul. And the fact that he's landing them all, he packs them in back to back to back, he just keeps going. It really is a testament to how good of a skater he is, and it's why he's won so many contests. Big 540 over the handrail. And then look at this channel gap right into his soul, walking on clean. Well, an 88.25 puts him in fourth place at the end of run number one. Pat Lennon, Jaron Grove both said they're going to let loose in the second. They need to because they're tied for second place. Is brought to you by Nokia. Personalize your phone, your life, your world. Nokia, connecting people. So Cameron Card holding strong after one round with a very technical first run. But in the second round, all the scores can change. Jaron Grove was happy with his first run, but said that he was going to let loose and do something big in his second round. Watch this start, dropping to soul fast, creative start, and in the 540 over the channel. Backside torque slide across that square rail. So a very good start to this run for Jaron Grove. It looked like a bend sole on that small ledge box. Oh. Going for a 270 fish frame. Up on top of the sub box. And now he's going back for it. So this is tough. He had a very good start to the run. Had everything working. Was bringing out a big trick. And now it looks like he's just determined to get this trick. So he is basically throwing away this run. Which means that that score is not going to go up for him. He's going to have to rely on the first round score. But you got to like the spirit of this. Trying to get the crowd pumped. Sticking the trick. Here he goes. And then instead of just spinning out of it easily, he tries to spin full 270 and goes down on the landing. Well, that's Jaron Grove for you. Never wanted to take the easy way out. 
and you can see still determined to get this trick now. He wants to land it just right. And by just right, I mean not on his butt. work on this one for a little bit. You can see the frustration. And this is well after the buzzer. So at this point, he's doing it for the crowd and just doing it for satisfaction of knowing that he got it done. Trying not to let that trick beat him. 270 fish frame, he lands it, he's on his feet, the crowd's appreciative. They do want to spin out a bit, that's all right. He'll have plenty of time to work on that one. In the meantime, here you go. You see, this is, was his best attempt at then trying to spin out of it, but not able to hold on to the landing. So a 90.25, Jaren will stick with his first run score. He's still tied for second place, and this guy was the guy on top after the first. Well, he had just a dream run in the first round, throwing all those difficult tricks and landing them all. But in the second round, as you can see, a much lower score was not able to hit all the tricks. And when you live by the sword, you die by the sword. Another guy who's thrown a lot of innovative and technical tricks is Dominic Zagona, never quite able to put together the way he wanted, but showing off some very innovative moves. And how about that? Abstract 540 is shuffle. Well, next up is known as Hardcore Brazil. Carlos Pianowski making his mark last season in a bunch of best trick contests. Talk about making mark. How about the first trick? Backside royale on the railing, and then another creative combo to follow it up, transferring from the coping box right onto that handrail. Frontside Farpanugan on the sub box. So this guy is really earning a reputation as a very exciting skater going 540 over the launch box. As you can see from the start of that run, finding some creative tricks with a lot of difficulty and the danger closure was pretty high. Disaster fish break. So another big trick from Carlos Pianowski, really packing them into this run. Showing off some technicality as well as he goes alley unity backside style across that square coping and now coming again to that wavy kink box making it across the flat just popping up right before the down part well with these last 10 seconds he uh He's let the energy level drop just a bit. Now, head, okay, picking it back up, fast slide, the top side porn star. Good run for Carlos Pianowski. Look at how pumped up he is after that very exciting run. Watch this. This is the very first trick, jumping up on that box, and then a backside royale with about 50-foot drop on the other side, and then look at this transfer. I don't really, like, care who is first, who is second. Like, it's everyone having fun doing, like, the tricks, pushing this part, and all close together for the crowd. And that's, that's cool. Well, Pat Lennon hinted at doing something big in his second run, he started off with a killer first run, and now that Jaron Grove and Cameron Card have also gone and not improved, the door's wide open. Well, there's something big, trying to do that topside soul on the railing, again with about 16, 18 foot drop on the other side, chaining up to Unity. But as you mentioned, he promised something big, and we saw that trick in the first round, so remains to be seen what this kid's got up his sleeve as he goes topside soul around the bowl. That was cool the way he pumped into that trick. Toe roll coming back the other way in the first round. Tried to balance that going the other way up on top of the sub box. Skating with a lot of speed to get set up. Well, and he looks kind of like he's making it up as he goes, which is kind of the way Pat Lennon skates. It's always fun to watch because you never know where he's headed, what he's going to do. And as time winds down, he's picking up speed all the way across the course. Oh! oh. <laughs> it looked like he was going to boost up and over the railing. That's a big trick. The backside slide up the ramp. Yeah, just dusting it off with his rear. Looks like he thought he didn't have enough speed or something coming up. So Pat Lennon going back to where he started picking up a lot of speed for his final trick. Flying across the course to the the soft tunes of Ramstein. <laughs> but he's, they're letting him do it again. This won't count towards the score, but whenever a guy wants to attempt to stunt like this, who's going to stop him? over the rail? And you can see that half on the other side, so. 
some excitement for the crowd. Here's that final stunt. Once again, over the rail, you see grabs at the last second. Aren't you worried about someone being on the back side of that street course? Uh, yeah, that was a slight concern, but, uh, you know, I'll take my chances, you know. Uh, there were some people, but they were walking a little bit farther away from uh, the gate, so they're okay. Yeah, that would have sucked, man. See, I don't think about that kind of stuff, man. It's like, there's a lot of money at stake, and I'm just going to jump over that. And I, I mean, I need to focus on jumping over that more than anything else, you know? There you have it. Spectators, be warned. If you're planning on coming out to one of these events, you better make sure you bring your helmet. So Pat Lennon's big stun, unfortunately, does not help his score. It happened after the buzzer. Now the door is wide open for this guy, Sven Bokers, to improve. And it, just as you say that, right off the bat, he misses his very first trick, which is very uncharacteristic for Sven, whose main strength is his consistency. But he's bouncing right back. So far, no trouble after that very first minor misstep. But in the finals, it's so important to hit all those tricks. But if anyone can recover from that, it's Sven, because he packed so many tricks into his run, going to Alley of Unity across the square rail. In fact, you get the sense that he wears all white, kind of sort of drive home that fact that he is so consistent. It's like, you know, I can wear all white because I'm not going to fall. Of course, the back of those pants tell a different story, but... Disaster. Transfer over the channel to Soul Grind. Slide. So he has come back from that first misstep. Pack a lot of tricks into this run. Fakey 360, Alley of Soul. Well, the run is very similar to his first run, but I dare say he didn't actually pull as many tricks as cleanly as he did in the first round of competition. And this one now is after the buzzer as he goes time grind. And so that is time for Sven Bokers. Yep, an 88-25 in his first run. He'll keep his first run score. 360 transferring into the mini ramp, so he brought some big tricks as well. He's not just a technical skater, but he does have the technicality as he goes out of unity. Well, Jaron Grove and Pat Lennon tried as they may, could not unseat Cameron Card, who gets a spot to the X. So what do you think it was that put you in first place today instead of 15th? Hitting every obstacle, probably, like, everything I uh, I pass, I hit. X Games, how do you feel about that? You're in your first Summer X Games. Very, uh, that's, I'm excited about that the most. It's going to be so fun. Yeah. Philadelphia. Well, congratulations to Cameron Card, Pat Lennon, and Jaron Grove. Jaron's still the number one ranked street park skater in the world. Lots of thrills and lots of spills from all the skaters here in the park. from us here in Texas, but we'll see you again at the next EXPN Invitational from Georgia. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to EXPN.com.